Hi class, so in this video I'm going to be addressing the VSEPR theory. It's an acronym for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. It sounds like really complex, but it's a very simple idea. So let's break it down. So valence electrons, they are found in the outer shell of an atom. And valence electrons are involved in bonding, as you've learned earlier. Electrons are those particles which are negatively charged and they come in pairs in bonds and in lone pairs so in a bond you have two electrons involved and because they're all negatively charged when they get near each other they repel each other they push away from each other so in class we're involved in an activity where we try to model what that looks like using toothpicks and styrofoam. As you can see from this, the toothpicks represent the bonds and the styrofoam represents the central atom. And you can see from this that the angle between the bonds from here to here is 180 degrees. Now the name for this structure is called linear which makes sense, right, because it's a straight line going across. When there are three bonds, the angle between them is 120 degrees. And this is called trigonal planar. All the bonds are in the same plane, and there's three of them. When there's four, the angle is 109.5 degrees. Now it's not immediately obvious because this is in three dimensions and not two. You can see that each bond is as far away from the other as possible. This structure is called tetrahedral. And the reason it is is if you were to draw imaginary faces on each side, you would have a you would have four different triangular shapes. That's hard to draw in two dimensions, but you'll see that more in class. When there are five bonds, you actually have two different angles and again that's not immediately obvious because it has to do with where the electrons reside in orbitals but we're not going to cover orbitals in this class so the angle between the vertical and the plane of three bonds is 90 degrees the angle between the bonds in the plane is 120 degrees and the name for this is trigonal bipyramid or bipyramidal, depending on who you ask. The reason you can see this is that if you draw a line between the bonds of the ones in the plane, and then connect the ones that are vertical, you'll notice that there's two pyramids. And again, it's a little hard to see from my drawing here, but you'll see that there's the bottom of the pyramid, and you have all, each corner pointing to the top of the pyramid. So it looks like like that, but there's two of them because one's facing down. And again, that'll be more obvious when we look at these models in class. When you have six bonds, the angle between every bond is 90 degrees. And this structure is called octahedral. And the reason it's called octahedral is because each pyramid has four sides. And you can see that when you have two pyramids facing, one facing up and one facing down, it'll have eight sides, hence octahedral. So all these structures are reviewed on this handout, which has these images on the other side. And we will talk about these in class. In order to understand this and this table, you need to know a couple of terms. And they are lone pairs and effective pairs. So a lone pair is an electron pair that is not in a bond. So you can see in this Lewis structure for hydrochloric acid, you can see that chlorine has three lone pairs. It's not involved in the bond between hydrogen and chlorine. An effective pair is the number of groups of electrons that are around an atom. So an effective pair can be a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, or a lone pair. So if you look at this carbon here, 
it has two effective pairs even though it has four lines and you can see that this carbon has two effective pairs around it one triple bond and one lone pair so it's important to be able to count that so I will do a few examples here to show you how to identify both the parent structure and the actual geometry around the center atom. You have CH4 which has single bonds, four single bonds to hydrogen off of it. So we first count the number of effective pairs. That's the first step. And you see that there's one, two, three, four effective pairs. The next thing to do is to count the number of lone pairs. And you see that there's no lone pairs around that carbon. So we're looking on that table for 4 and 0. So you see that 4, the number of effective pairs is 4, the number of lone pairs is 0. So the parent geometry of CH4 is tetrahedral, and because it has no lone pairs, the actual and molecular geometry is also tetrahedral. When you do that, you notice that the hydrogens are all around the outside and the carbon is in the center. Kind of like the cream filled center of a Twinkie and the breading on the outside. Because of that, this is a nonpolar molecule. It doesn't have sides to it. Let's take a look at the next example, which is water, H2O. You can see that around this center oxygen, you have one, two, three, four effective pairs. But you also see that you have two lone pairs. So again, we look at our chart to understand what the structures are. So four effective pairs and two lone pairs. The parent geometry is tetrahedral, but the actual geometry is bent or V-shaped. You have water that looks like this with two lone pairs at the top. And you notice that if oxygen has this, these two lone pairs on the top, it's very negative on this side, so it's delta minus. On this side, on the bottom side, there's not as many electrons, so it's delta plus. And you see that when you have a difference on both sides, this molecule is polar. In the next example, we have carbon dioxide. So again, you can see that the number of effective pairs around the central atom is one and two. Even though there are four lines, it's only two effective pairs. And there are no lone pairs. So again, we look on our chart. So two effective pairs and no lone pairs means that it's linear as a parent geometry and the actual geometry is also linear and you draw it in a straight line like this in our last example we're going to talk about xenon tetrafluoride and you see here from this there's one two three four five six effective pairs and you see that there's two lone pairs. So again we look at our chart and we see that six effective pairs and two lone pairs. The parent geometry is called octahedral and the actual molecular geometry is called square planar. And this makes sense because the XE has the F around it in all one plane and sticking down is the lone pair and sticking up is the lone pair. Remember lone pair electrons are more negative than the bonds so they're going to get as far from each other as possible and that keeps these in the same plane, square planar. In class what we're going to do is be able to identify which structures here are each of the ones that are mentioned in this figure and what you have to know how to do on the quiz is identify which geometry you have and which picture corresponds to that name.
So thanks for watching. Please write down questions and I will answer them in class. Thanks. Bye.